Hey, this is John from Alloy211. In today's video, we're going to be making an optics mount for our GSG MP40P. Now, I've kind of wanted to put an optic on this since I bought it, mostly because it has a threaded hole front and back of the rear sight, which just instantly made me want to put an optic on it. Mostly because I could easily. I wouldn't have to use, say, like electrical tape and zip ties to put an optic on it. I actually have some nice threaded holes. So I went and looked and looked and I did see that they offer a rail for this, but I've never actually seen one for sale. And even if I did, I probably am too cheap to buy it, so I would just make my own anyway. So in that vein, I went on Amazon looking for some cheap sections of aluminum Picatinny rail. Whereas I came across for less than $15, a three section pack of M-Lock, which they also came with uh, screws and the little locks and all that good stuff. For less than $15, you get three sections and plenty of screws. Oh, and also the Allen wrench. Um, but you get plenty of screws and the three sections, a two inch, a three inch, and about a five inch section there. For our purposes, we're just gonna use the two inch section. Now, if you notice, it does have holes in it. But these holes don't quite line up with the holes on the GSG. So we'll have to drill a new hole. And for the most part, you can kind of put that anywhere you want, but if you notice, it does have an M-Lock tab on the back, which in reading the reviews, someone was really happy that they did for such a low cost. But we wanna make sure that that is not gonna interfere with where we're drilling our hole. Because if you put it in the wrong place, you're gonna have to drill through that, and you don't really wanna to have to do that. So. If you do choose to do this and you choose to use one of these, think about the alignment of that tab. Anyway, there are two different ways you could do this. I'm gonna zoom in just a tad. And you can either make an adapter that goes above the rear sight, kind of bridges it like that, which is what I'm going to do. Or the GSG has a nice provision here that you can just unset the set screw, little tiny Allen wrench, and your rear sight slides right out. So you could make a mount that sits flush with this. I myself know that if I were to take this rear sight section out, there's a very, very good chance that I will lose it. I mean, I'm not saying I would lose it, but there's a good chance I'd lose it. And not just that, <clears throat> whenever I have an optic, pardon me, um, on a gun, I do like to have backup iron sights because if that optic were to fail and you don't have sights, it just becomes a point shooting affair, which can work, but well, kind of sucks. So what we're gonna do here first is we'll go ahead and look to make sure our little M-lock tab isn't going to be in the way of where we're going to drill, which it's not. Let's see if I can get this to sit here. It's not going to. But hey, that happens. Now these are an M7 metric thread. These are a 17 millimeter long screw, uh, about 5 eighths of an inch. And what I'm gonna do to get my centers is I'm going to just screw these in. Oh, and also be aware that these holes go all the way through to the receiver. So if you put too long of a screw in, it will interfere with the bolt, which I found that out after I screwed these in too far and they interfered with the bolt. So, let me learn the lesson that you don't have to. Now what I'm going to do, grab the right Allen wrench, I have a pile of Allen wrenches over here. Oh, you know, it's on the other side. And I'm going to do my best to align the flats on these Allens to where they're parallel with the sight like so, zoom in a tad. Now it's gonna be kind of hard to tell. Yep. It's kind of interesting, on camera they don't look quite as parallel as they do in reality in front of me. So, but once I have that, because it gives me a point that should be relatively aligned with the center of both holes, I'm going to take my ruler and measure And we have about one inch from the center of each hole to, uh, from the point on the Allen head to each one. So we have a one inch center on the distance. 
take these back out of there. So, let me take our Picatinny rail, set it here, set that there, or I guess set it here. And then we'll want to, and I'm just gonna use my eye. If you want, you can actually measure this and mark out your center. You, know, you can measure it there, then mark your center there. But I'm going to do it by eye. Uh, and I, I would actually suggest you probably should measure it out. I'm doing it by eye as that I actually do this in my course of my job very often. So I have a pretty good eye for the center of a circle. Not to say that other people don't, but when you do it a lot, it does make it easier. Okay, now we have our distance from this hole to where we want our center of our hole. Now we're going to take our digital calipers. And you can do this with the ruler too. And we're gonna reset this to inch. Just because we're already working in inches, when I'm working in inches, I like to stay in one measurement. Okay, measure that. Oh, there we go. Measures out to about 0 0.607, 608. So I'm gonna take the dial caliper, move it down to 0 0.304. Eventually, we'll get there. Almost there. Nearly there. Oh. Oh, not quite. Almost. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh six. Oh two and a half. Oh six. Oh, oh. Saw for a second. That's good enough. No, oh God, too far. There we go, 0 0.304. Wow, that took a minute. We're gonna go ahead and put one side of the dial, dial caliper to the edge of the Picatinny rail. And we're going to mark. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just to, I'm not gonna mark, I'm just gonna double check that's about centered. And that is it, that is our center point for our hole. Now, I am going to oversize this just a tad, so that way we can make sure that we have a little bit of play. Um, now it's not gonna be a whole bunch, but just a little bit. Now before we take this over to, honestly, the cutest little vise I've ever seen in my life, which I bought for this project, we're gonna go ahead and use a punch to dimple our center. Mm, looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and kind of give that a bit of a measurement. It's good there. And I'm just gonna use this. Now I can use our dial caliper. Let's see where, see where we landed. Hopefully our point is good. Oh, well, it looks pretty good. There you go, looks pretty good. So, like I said, now we'll take this over to the cutest little vice that I've ever seen. I think it's a jeweler's, vi jeweler's vice. I picked it up for about $14 on Amazon mostly for this project and any other little project I have for a mini vise. So we'll go ahead and go over there, put it in the vise and start drilling. Okay, now that we're over with our tiny little bench vise, which really is, it is super cute, but it is very fragile. And I would not suggest using it for any project, say bigger than this. I believe it is sold as more of a jeweler's vise. And if you read the reviews on them, there are people that talk about breaking them, but I'm assuming that's because they try to do something that it was really not made for. But I wanted to try to find a cheap bench vise that I could use here. This is actually on one end of my reloading table for a couple different things and it didn't need to be really heavy duty, it just needed to be a vise. So we're using it for this project. I'm go ahead and slide it in with the rail section down. So that way we have a nice flat surface. If you wondered why we we're doing this on the bottom to start out with, it was so that we'd have a nice flat surface to start out with. Go ahead and secure that in our vise. And like I said, do not put too much pressure on this or else it will break. So we're gonna start out with a pilot hole using a, about a 932nd bit. Now this is aluminum, so it should drill pretty easily. We'll see. Oh yeah, it's drilling pretty easily. Uh, 
and we're going and we're going I don't want to put too much pressure on this because it is just the pressure of the vise oh see that's why I didn't want to put too much pressure on it although we are almost through let me reset this in the vise because yeah since we don't have anything physically keeping it from being pushed down it's just the pressure on the vise so okay well hope we're going the right way there we go just gentle pressure to keep it from pushing out of the vise like i just did it a second ago and we're getting there we're getting there give it a little more this is taking forever Oh, almost. Oh, did we make it through or did we just pop it out of the vise? Take it out and check. Mm, didn't quite make it through, almost. <laughs> okay. Back into the vise we go. No, I mean, you could use some sort of pads or, jice or jaw, jaw pads if you had a different vice so you didn't mar it up, but I'm not the kind of person that's really that concerned about that, so. I believe we made it through. There we go, we made it through. Eh, pretty centered. Should be good enough for what we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this in the vise, this side up, like so. Now I gotta change bits to a 3 16 bit. There we go. <clears throat> now, pardon me. Go ahead and get that centered on there. And start, oh, start going. It's not gonna wanna stay on because of our kind of offset edge of this rail, which is something I was afraid of. Hmm. I think I'm gonna have to do something else before I can go ahead and drill the through hole. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, now with another bit, I'm actually going to go ahead and flatten out this little section of the Picatinny rail. So that way we have a relatively flat surface. You can see it's got a flat and a bit of a pilot on there. That way it'll give us a flat surface to hopefully start drilling through. And we're going. And we're going. And we're going. <clears throat> do, 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 do. <laughs> I didn't uh, know for sure whether I was going to have to do this step or not when I started, so I was going to leave it out, but it does appear as though if I don't do this, we're not going to get a good straight hole. So, check and see where we are. <laughs> and we're making it. Well, so you don't have to watch me do the rest of this with my hand in the way and all that. I'll come back once I've gotten this flattened out. Okay, now we're back. As you can see, taking out that section right there just to clearance it. So that way the drill bit sits flush. Otherwise it kept wanting to run off to one side and that's not going to make a good hole. So let's zoom back out just a tad. Hopefully we'll be able to see something as I now drill the through hole through with the 3 16 bit. Not that you can tell by looking at it, but that's what it is. Okay, we'll see. Maybe. There we go. 
Nice thing is with the this way in the vise, just a good amount of gentle pressure. I don't have to worry about it slipping out this time at least. Although I don't want to just punch right through this thing and hit my, my, my little vise here. I don't want to hurt it. Not just because I spent money on it, because it is. It's an awesome little vise. Clear my threads, or clear my shavings, <laughs> my threads. <laughs> okay, I'm nearly there. <laughs> Oop, there we go. <laughs> and we have our through hole. Let me grab one of our mounting screws really quickly see how it sits well pretty good pretty good got to clean that out just a tad wanted to countersink it I don't know this bit will be big enough to do what I want I might have to go grab another bit let's see And I'm just, I'm just, there we go. Just kind of beveling the edge of that hole. I'm not drilling with that bigger bit down into it too deeply. Just enough to bevel it a tad. Oh. Find my screw I inexplicably set somewhere strange. Okay. Yeah, that, that is actually good. There are just some bits caught down in there I'm going to have to clean up with a file, I'll probably get a file in there and clean that up. But that looks like all we need to do over here on our little vise. So dismount it, head back over to the table, see how we did on our alignment. Yeah, doesn't look, doesn't look too bad. Pretty close, pretty close. So see you over there. Okay, now after a bit of fit and finish filing, we have it mounted on our GSG. MP40P. Now, if you want, you want, you can always go back in and paint it to clear up your raw aluminum that you can see. But there it is mounted. Our whole spacing was pretty good. Everything's pretty good. I used a couple pieces of quarter inch vacuum hose, like this, as spacers underneath the Picatinny rail and above the site, so that way it's not actually riding on the site. And it keeps it in tension, so you don't have to worry about your screws uh, loosening up too much on you. The other thing to remember, like I said, is these screw holes do go all the way into the receiver. So if you screw them in too far, they will interfere with your bolt. So if, I, if you were to put this in too far, in fact, this front one, if you put it in too far, it will not allow the bolt to open. And if the back one's in too far, it will open, but it will only open until about there. So that's definitely something to consider when you're thinking about your uh, mount and how you're going to mount it, how you're going to space it, all that. So now that we have a mount, I guess we're going to need some optics. Well, I don't guess, I already know because I bought some. One is the cheapest micro red dot that I could find on Amazon, which we'll see how that works out. This is actually more what is intended to go on this is, you know, as I've stated before, this is kind of a novelty range gun and I'm not really that concerned if I put a cheap micro red dot on it and it doesn't work or it doesn't hold zero or it doesn't hold up because, well, it's not anything that's gonna ever have to be really relied on. But I also bought another micro red dot that's reasonably priced but the quality of it is much much higher so we'll be taking a look at this and this in an upcoming video but then having all these optics to mount on things i thought well you know maybe i need some way to make that a bit faster so i went ahead and bought one of these a golden fortune laser bore cider which I'll make a little video where I talk about how I feel about these because I'd never used one before and actually of all the people I know that shoot only one person I knew had ever actually used one before and if I didn't have so many different calibers and actually several different optics that I needed to sight in I probably wouldn't have bought one myself I've always done it more in a traditional way looking down the bore and sights and all that but 
you know, I've got optics to put on this. I've got some optics to try on some other things. So figured why not we'll go ahead and pick one of those up. So if you found this video informative or helpful in making a mount for your GSG MP40, I'd really appreciate a like. If you watch some of our other videos and you find those helpful, informative, or just entertaining, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. So thanks and I hope you have a great day.